If you're an overwhelmed project manager, I hope I can share some wisdom with you today. I'm a project manager and certified Scrum Master here at Bulb Digital, and I've really found that these five hacks have increased my productivity using the Microsoft 365 tools. Let's talk about how you can revolutionize your retro. So if you've ever done a project and you're thinking at the end of it, man, we should really like look back at the project and what went well, what didn't go well, but the whole process just feels tedious and you're not really sure which tool to use. So what's my hack? My hack is to create a retrospective using the retro template within Loop. Let me show you how that works. So you're in your Loop workspace, you've got your project wrap up uh, page set up. To get this team retrospective template to show up, you just open up the slash menu and you're going to choose the retro option. It says team retrospective, you click that. And one of the things I love about it the most is it's all set up for you. So in most retros, you have a keep doing column, what's going well, what should we keep doing? You have a stop doing column, what didn't go so well, what should we not do on the next project? and a start doing. Uh, you can edit these and completely customize everything, add groups, add columns, um, and then you're off to the races. You can do your retrospective with your team in this shared workspace. So a couple of benefits here. Number one, a loop retrospective board within a loop shared workspace makes it super easy to collaborate with your team. I typically have these just in the same workspace as the rest of the project information, and if you've already shared that with your team members, then they'll have access to it as well. Like I said, it's all pre-set up and it's really easy to customize. And I can even make a page template of this retrospective board to reuse uh, over and over. And now the real magic happens. So let's use Copilot to analyze the responses. So I don't need to go through this board and try to understand what are the big takeaways. I can ask Copilot to do it for me. So I'm gonna click on Copilot. I'm gonna grab my prompt here. Okay, so I put my prompt in. It says, given this retro, what are the things we should keep doing and do differently on our next project? So this was Copilot's first attempt at my prompt. It made it a really nice table for me with the action and the description of what my team should keep doing. But then I took it a step further and actually asked it to consolidate these into just three different areas so that I could easily and more focused uh, communicate with my team what we're gonna try to do different next time. So I've got the keep doing, the start doing, the stop doing, and I can actually take all of these and copy and paste them right into my project channel uh, and make sure we're all aligned for what we're going to do on the next iteration. So to sum up this hack, use Loop and Copilot for your next retro to make it easy for your team to walk away understanding what went well, what didn't go so well, and what you're gonna start doing on your next project. Hey everyone, Future Emma here. We've been getting a lot of requests about project management, task management, and how to use Microsoft 365 to achieve an optimized system for both. So we've started to create some courses and workshops and webinar content. If you wanna be first to know about when we're dropping this content, sign up in the link below. We're really interested to get your feedback on what will help you uh, achieve success with project management and task management. Okay, so let me set up this scenario for you. If you wanna collaborate with your team on content and you wanna present, but you don't wanna work within the traditional final format like a PowerPoint deck, you should really start using Loop for your presentations. The hack here is to set up a topic or project-based Loop shared workspace. That's always step one. But then use that workspace and the pages within it to share with your team members as you collaborate and present. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say you have a weekly meeting every week and you wanna share your agenda on your screen, but you don't wanna to have to make an entire PowerPoint deck. You can see here I've got weekly meeting at the top, I've got my time box agenda, and as I scroll down, it's easy for viewers to only focus on what is on my screen. I've hidden all of the different sidebars and all of the different navigation menus, and we're just looking at what our current focuses are. As I walk through things on the meeting, I'm scrolling down, talk through the action items that we're expecting everyone to do. This is sort of like a light task management tool. As I ask people what they're doing, I can check off, okay, that's done, that's done. Maybe I add some extra items from our discussion. And I can even have something like upcoming milestones in here with a, a really clean table. Um, I can change different labels letting people know if things are falling behind, if they're in process, if we've got a deadline coming up. 
and cross things off uh, as they get done. The freeform nature of Loop is one of my favorite aspects because it allows you to reorganize your content without feeling constrained by the design limitations of Word with page breaks or slides and all that formatting within PowerPoint. So the hack here is really a simple hack. It's essentially just adding a bunch of spaces, space, 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 between your different sections, which allows you to scroll through and really focus in the audience on the content you're looking to share. I found this really to be a hidden benefit it's not something I expected when I started using Loop, but it really makes it easy to create and share presentations uh, all within the same tool. So it's just one of those efficiency hacks that I want to share with everyone I know. So there's tons of project management softwares out there, right? Uh, Microsoft has a few different tools within that realm. Uh, today I want to talk about Planner and how I've been using it as kind of like a light version of DevOps. I've really figured out with a couple tweaks you can make Planner kind of have that power that DevOps has. Um, you just have to use their different features um, a little bit differently than they might have been designed, but it works. So to start, you have to create a Planner board and share this with your different team members. And what you want to do is set up the page to have multiple different columns that mimic the way DevOps is set up. So I've got a backlog, my dev active environment. I always create a dev complete so that as my developers let me know that things are complete in dev, I can move things there and then test, and then our production. This really follows the life cycle of features through the development process. Uh, so we do a typical weekly uh, look back at the backlog, trying to see what's gonna be on deck. Then we pull things into active when we're actively working on them. As my developers let me know that things are complete, I pull them there. Then they go into test, and then they go, hopefully, into production. Using Planner in this way has a number of benefits. Number one, you can easily share this Planner board with various audiences, especially if you're looking to only share it with a limited level of detail. Um, you can share this with execs or external parties or any type of leadership. I'm a Scrum Master, and we use Agile, so story points are a really big part of the tasks and the different features that we talk through. I'm definitely a fan of using story points, especially if you're working with a completely different team where you need to get aligned on how much work a certain task is going to take. And what I've figured out is you can just use the different labels uh, within Planner. And I like to kind of color code them. So as they get bigger and more complicated, I use the oranges and the reds. And then if they're easy and small, I use the greens. You can also add other tags like waiting for approval or on hold, again, just to really tag things and align everyone so everyone's aware what's going on with that task. One of the things I've done to create a historical list of everything that's been moved into production is as you let everyone know that it's in production and everyone's aligned, it's there, you can check that off and it will go into this kind a toggle menu uh, where it shows different completed tasks and if you get you know a hundred different features that are now completed and in production then you'll have that historical look back capability of going in and seeing when it was completed and then of course you can add extra details to a task so if you click in you can add notes you can choose to show those on the card you can add a checklist or you can add attachments uh, or make comments so just having the ability to add extra detail into these different tasks is really helpful when you're trying to collaborate with a big group. So the hack here is if you're not looking to use the level of detail and the software like DevOps for your project management, you can really create a DevOps light environment within Planner with just a few tweaks and using the different features that Planner offers to make it feel more like a DevOps. So this scenario is if you want to be more present in your meetings, but you really feel bogged down because you have to take notes and you have to capture action items and you're just really worried you're gonna miss something, I definitely know that feeling and my hack has been using Copilot during meetings. So the hack is really quite simple. Once you get your Copilot license, you can turn on Copilot during your meetings. So whether it's your stand-up meetings or project-specific meetings, just turn Copilot on. Either do this by starting a transcription or starting recording. And then you can ask questions during the meeting or analyze that transcription or that recording after the meeting. The first prompt I always use is all about action items. 
But I don't just ask it simply to create a list of action items. I ask it to create a table with all of the action items and I actually label the columns. So column one, task, column two, who is doing the task, and column three, what is the deadline? And I've been really impressed that Copal is able to understand all of these different aspects of action items and put them into an organized table for me to use and send out to the team. The second prompt that I use quite often is all about meeting notes. But again, I don't just ask it to generate meeting notes or really even use the recap that it generates. I ask it to create a bulleted list of the top 10 takeaways uh, from the meeting discussion. This gives it a number to shoot for and it creates a nice bulleted list. There are so many benefits to using Copilot on your meetings. Number one, there's no more you know, frantic note taking and trying to jot down all the different action items that different people are talking about. You can just trust that Copilot is really recording everything. Number two, you can cross check what Copilot gives you after that meeting and that recap with what you kind of have in your mental notes or anything that you did jot down. So you don't feel like you're the only person capturing everything. Another benefit is it makes it really easy to copy and paste the different recaps or the action item lists by just clicking that copy and paste in the corner and pasting that right into your topic-based channel and letting all your teammates know what they need to do. You could even go a step further and add all of those different action items to a planner board, tagging and assigning the different uh, people who said that they were going to do the different tasks, and then this really creates a link between that meeting, between Copilot, and between planner, really creating an efficient circle. So the hack here is use Copilot during meetings so that you can feel more present and feel like the action items and the note-taking is off your plate. So this scenario is if you have a survey or a feedback request that you need to put together to elicit some feedback from a different group or a team that you're working with, and it can just feel really tedious and difficult to come up with all the different questions to get the responses that you want. So the hack here is to create a Microsoft form using Copilot from the very beginning. So you can actually just draft the entire survey with one prompt. Here I put, create a survey for an interview with leadership on mastering communication and collaboration with Microsoft 365 that takes five minutes to complete. So I'm giving Copilot a little bit of guardrails on how long I want the survey to be. I click generate and Copilot will actually come up with a bunch of different questions. I find using Copilot to start the survey really removes the writer's block for me because then I can just take the questions it starts me with and edit from there. This really allows you to ditch that one size fits all generic survey approach because you can create customized surveys honestly in seconds, so it makes more sense to create a new survey per project to be really targeted and focused on what you're looking to get. And one of the other benefits that I think is the best is you don't have to be an expert in research or survey creation. Copilot creates questions that you may not have even thought to ask um, that really does help get at the core of what you're looking to understand from your audience. So I hope that these tips helped you. It's all about trying to figure out how to use Microsoft tools in a way that's going to make you more productive. I know Microsoft tools aren't perfect, but if you figure out little tweaks here and there and kind of play the game, you can really find that they'll boost your productivity. I talked about Teams, Loop, Planner, Microsoft Forms, and Copilot, and how you can kind of use a combination of all of these. So I hope these hacks help you kind of figure out different ways to combine these tools together to really increase your productivity. If you have a hack that you're using, definitely post it in the comments because I would be eager to learn it. Um, so both for me and for everyone else that's watching, definitely share your hacks for productivity within Microsoft 365. We do something kind of unique here at Bob Digital. The first Wednesday of every month, we hold Office Hours, which is an open forum live stream where you can come and bring your questions about modernizing your workplace. And we work through different problems and challenges that you might be facing and offer solutions and just hopefully give some helpful tips. So if you're interested in joining those, we will drop a link here in the description. Would love to see you at the next one.